Hello everybody, um, I'm Mario Libar Jr. and I'm here at Slangwood Studio with the awesome Juji. What's up? <laughs> she just, she's just coming back from a show in Harlem. Shows in Harlem. Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse, New York. Yep. Residencies in Florida. Right. And just drove up the 22 freeway from Costa Mesa here to Slangwood. <laughs> She's looking great though. Thank She's you. She's gorgeous. Her hair is looking <laughs> awesome. She's a beautiful purple shirt on. She's looking like she just was having a good time there. And I still uh, want my ice cream. Oh, her ice cream. I'll go get that right now. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, just, just uh, can you tell us a little bit about just your residency while I get you your ice cream, Ms. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> uh, Sarasota is awesome. I went there for two and a half weeks and I enjoyed it. Uh, met artists from different disciplines. Um, one was a writer, musician, filmmaker, um, composer. So every artist there, with a, there were different um, artistic genres. And uh, there was a point of collaboration, I guess, in introducing each other and knowing what each other were doing. There was no competition. Mm. Um, they gave me a studio to work with. It was really awesome. And um, the... The staff there were open, but interesting enough, they're not artists themselves. No? They're just, yeah, they're just regular people. So are they facilitators? Are they, they, are they technical people at all? Or? They're more administrative. Uh, administrative people that put this thing together. They work with the Ringling Museum in Sarasota. Uh, you know, okay. the founder of the Ringling Brothers Circus. Oh, really? Awesome. And the university over there. And, and they put this thing together. You said they have a residency for artists. It's almost like an artist retreat slash residency. Wow. Um, it's a six weeks uh, residency that you can break it up as you like. Wow. You can go one week, two weeks, six weeks break it up. Wow, you know? so you were there for two and a half weeks, you said, Two right? and a half, um, just because I needed to come back to work and make <laughs> money. Um, money, money, that, that was, you know, we had that pre-conversation and we've been talking about that money, right? Yeah, so, so how do artists survive and make it even though, you know, is it artist, being an artist, is it something that is a labor, or is it a job, or, or, is, or is it something you feel that you want to do? And yeah. then, the, but the optimal, the optimal thing of that would be how that all comes together, right? Where your labor, job, passion, right, and thing that entertains you keeps you a vehicle for education for yourself, right? True. Yeah, because for me, I, so I found that art has been that a lot of a lot of times it's just not so much just the making part of it, but a way to kind of learn about new things, mm -hmm. to explore, to explore right. and find out like things that interest me and then like chase those things down to like, I feel like I'm satisfied and, and have acquired a kind of knowledge base on those mm -hmm. ideas. But and the thing is though, I mean, it just, just even to push that idea further, that depends on what kind of, where you are, in the arts in itself you know mm -hmm. if you're doing art for yourself mm -hmm. then people call it then it's a hobby or whatever so mm -hmm. it's for yourself but if you're introducing it to the world mm -hmm. to a public mm -hmm. to someone to understand your language because mm -hmm. art in itself is language and we are the history makers we the ones who make and you know make history mm -hmm. see you know see how the world is today when we put it in our own way yeah but then how does the viewer Regardless of who they are, where they are in the world, can mm. see and say, I get it. Yeah. So when That's you our job. When how to communicate. That's our job. There's your ice cream. <laughs> how? how right. So, so That's there has to be a... So what you're saying is, is there that artists are communicators. We're putting things into the world. That's right. But the loop isn't complete until like somebody actually understands what, that's being, what the message you're sending out or the, the kind of... Uh, That's right. The Morse code. And somebody like is on the other side, understanding what the That's is right. this and is this. That's and right. So there needs to be a loop of of communication, reciprocity right. between what you're putting out as an and artist then, on a platform. That's right. And then somebody receiving it and getting some kind of experience. Yeah, experience or, that that's transcended in a way that that say, okay, we are together in this. But I also see these different patterns mm -hmm. in the situation. Mm -hmm. But but the message is one. 
Mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. that's our job. I mean, we are the artists, we are the creators, we are the creators of this world, right? Yeah, yeah. And everything that you see, somebody had to make it. Yes. It's us. Yeah. But then the receiver mm -hmm. of this, this communication got to see the same path. And even though maybe it doesn't make sense, but to say said, I get it. I get exactly what you're talking but there, about. There, but, the, but there's also like a, a kind of patience that you yeah. kind of have to have as an artist because oh, yeah. you're, as an artist, you're the visionary. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing things mm -hmm. that other people can't see initially. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, so, so you're you're putting you you're constantly putting things forth or, or like blazing a trail into a future that people will follow. That's so, right. So so you've got it. There might be a delay in in that initial message going out that's and then right. how people will pick it up and that's the problem that we're having as artists mm. because in a sense where this world is going around so fast things are just happening so quickly mm -hmm. i mean technologies are advancing mm -hmm. in the blink of an eye you know this thing already that we have is already ancient right yeah, yeah. but then you know as artists we develop these ideas in a very slow and slow pace just to give it life mm -hmm. i mean life is just not something that is born and there it is it's, it grows right yeah, yeah. until it becomes a little mature state then we give it to the world by then maybe it's already passe yeah you know what i mean or so, or on the other hand of being passe it's just too advanced oh too advanced uh, yeah. you're absolutely correct you it's know? just too advanced for the rest of culture or and the rest to get of the catch of, up yeah need to catch up yeah i was yeah. reading um there's this little pant that I picked up when I went to the to Madrid in mm -hmm. um, the spring, and um, it's a little pamphlet. I forget who did it, but it's kind of like the theme of the pamphlet is it's a lecture that a man gave on how to collect art, uh, how to create an art collection very inexpensively, mm -hmm. and um, and it's really uh, was really insightful because he was mm -hmm. saying um, that he kind of put in one category uh, the the artist. Art, mm -hmm. art uh, curators mm -hmm. and art critics are on one side of this kind of message being sent out because you know artists are, are putting things out but they we need the curators to help us uh, forward that institutionally and you need the critics to bring it into text or put it into a way give it apply language to it right and you're saying that 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 end is usually like the poor end, <laughs> poor end. that's true but, but that's the most vanguard it's like, like the spear tip of, of like what this thing that is what you're talking about like the language of communication but they're the ones that are kind of the 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 senders senders and receiver the first kind of cycle of sending and the receiving language. that message right and pushing it forth into like another world um but then he was saying that and they're the ones that are also take like curators and and critics take that uh from artist studios mm -hmm. and then start putting it into institutions where an audience can see it right and yeah. uh and they were, and in the the book, he was saying that most paintings by artists uh, don't really sell until maybe three years after. <laughs> and and three, that's it takes like three point. years for somebody to, to like to that's go right. through that first initial filter of like right. artist making in a studio, uh, curator seeing it or art historian seeing it, writing about it, curating right. it into an exhibition, contextualizing it with language, art history, etc. Um, for a collector to kind of be introduced to it or a collector base or a general audience to right. be introduced to it and then the collector then saying like oh then this is good then this is since it's been placed in these contexts and contextualized within art history right. and I've read about it in this catalog that the museums come out with etc then they know that oh they can take the risk of, 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 of acquiring that Oh, but but then it's like where you would equate it in like a monetary loop of, right. of uh, consumption. But um, so it was just interesting to hear that like a, there's like there is like imagine that like yeah. that this guy was saying that there's like a three day delay three out three year hour three, year, talk, yeah. three, year, three delay. year delay that's true. But then you know it's so funny that you even mentioned that uh -huh. because I was just wondering about this little school of thought that, you know, you have to go through this process to be known as being this other, you know, this high-end artist. But uh -huh. because then at the end, these curators, these, these critics and whatever choose yeah. who are the ones who are going to be yeah. in this end. Yeah, Unfortunately, the taste, make, the taste the, makes. That's taste, right. Taste makers. That's right. I mean, and then, and then they're the artists in this end. You know, I mean, the best example for that, I think is is, is for instance the the the, the uh, Art Basel, 
uh-huh. you know, or, or situations like that where the whole process is kind of like in one one room, right? Yeah. You have all these artists, they're like known to being, oh my gosh, high-end artists, and then you got the collectors who are gonna buy it, who cares? It looks pretty on my wall, yeah, right? Yeah. It looks nice. Now, now, do they even care about the whole thought process of uh, these high-end you know, educators saying, oh, your art is fine and whatever, but then you have all this money, you know, this guy's buying because it looks great on yeah. next to my well, I think Door. that I think that's the whole kind of paradox of that's the right. situation and like the dichotomy and, and because uh, that's an institution. Yeah, we yeah. are all kind of kind of like you know pushing to that institution because yeah. it's saying okay, fine art. You know, the art that you make is fine art, so it needs to live in this world. Yeah. Versus people that make art just for 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 art's sake yeah. because I like it. It looks great. They enjoyed making. Enjoy making. They enjoy the process. There's no thought process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, that that's a little bit of like I've I've been running into that as an educator in different institutions go. because right. there there are different types, and mm-hmm. I think that that's the 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 problem is that it it tries to take like a whole pantheon of kind of different types of art production and then filter them through one kind of grinder. And then, you know what I mean? Where yeah. I don't think that there should be more of like a sorting that happens at the beginning instead of going through that one grinding system to produce a product at the end. And I, like one of the things that I've been talking about with some of my students mm-hmm. uh, over the past year or two, more, more particularly more uh, graduate students because they're coming in and they think that, that they have to think through their projects, think through their work first. Right that they have to think through it contextually within our history, uh, through theory, uh, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, some kind of pedagogical if conversation, you want to try, ar- you can. Ar- arguments, <laughs> right, 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 and that they have to think through their project. So then when I go to the studio, I don't, I'm, I'm like listening to their ideas, but what, I'm, what, what I was failing to see in tandem with their thinking through was a making through. Right, the process. The make actual. through, make through, make through. Because at the end of the day, we want to, there has to be something there. Right. You know, even in, even when, in regards to the best kind of conceptual art. Right. There's always some remnant or ephemera right. or indicator of what took place. You know what I mean? I think it's also due to this new generation of the whole thing about manual production is reducing. Huh. It, it has its own... Manual production almost it has its own level, you know. The people that make the thing are lower than the people that type it up. You know I what I mean? The one that you know. So the it's one like that a kind of sweatshop idea. A sweatshop idea. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where they're more into now, and you know, the hierarchy of I will think the idea and you make it. But yeah, it's kind of like the the Apple campaign lately that that says something not made in California, but thought in California or right. it's something to the fact where like the ideas happen in California but production happens in Somewhere China. Else. Okay. Yeah. It's so you're saying production. that there's like a kind of hierarchical shift in relationship to the notion of a maker that was a craftsman in times past and right. had like a certain kind of respectability and a certain kind of space and status within culture and that has shifted to where like production or manual labor is, per- is, is, is perceived to be lesser than. Right. I mean, I mean, you're just even thinking about it, you know, with the whole stereotype and the whole exoticism of actually making something. Mm. If you look through history, you know, all the our past painters or sculptors or whatever, you know, they actually made it, you know, mm-hmm. you go back, you know, Michelangelo's and whatever case may be, mm-hmm. they were there making. However, they were laborers. Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. weren't high-end artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't yeah. even consider that. There yeah, is in some, class, you mean. In class, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Now, today, where everything was done, the whole thing about detail, perception, perfection, you know, has been done. Now we have to start thinking about space and time in a whole different direction. What exactly is going on, right? Everything has to be quick, manufactured, done, now. And that's... And disposable. And disposable. And completely disposable. That means ideas are disposable. Mm. Right? We Mm. think about this process, but then imagine. Don't make it. Imagine. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So everything becomes kind of plastic made. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's this plastic kind of geologies. Uh Where things that are created 
you know, like, why would you take that time? I mean, even today, you have artists, for instance, that actually put the hand in making the art, but then, but then it's almost like you versus this um, architect or, or this uh, abstract artist, you know, who exactly is higher Hmm. In the levels. Yeah, it's like the 1,300 and something uh, Damien Hirst yeah. dot paintings. Yeah. They're He's more like a manufactured handbag than they are like a, a kind of handworked painting. Handworked. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, let's even talk about uh, Thomas Kincaid stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, he made one painting and look how <laughs> he just <laughs> completely put it into a print and made candles, pens, whatever yeah. case may be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See hmm. what I'm saying? How things are going? You know, it's it's interesting. Yeah, but I found I found too that there's also like a shift just in in relationship to like my education and mm -hmm. like what, and when with with my education when I was in school, like the idea of being kind of clever was really important. Like how how clever mm -hmm. could you could I be? And um and I think that that was like a kind of attraction for me because I thought, oh wow, like if I could be clever. And if I could like do these things that were about ideas and about cleverness, like outsmarting somebody, kind of outsmarting it, mm. yeah. Like if I could outsmart the system, mm. like that was like a held to like a real regard to be able to like outsmart somebody, you know, or outsmart the system. And then what mm. I found now, like you know, however many years ago to later, that it that was kind of being clever was. Uh, it wasn't that it wasn't a waste of time because it really did stretch my stretch right. my ability to think past like right. what I thought things were. Right. But uh, but like cleverness just isn't enough. Mm -mm. And like there has to for me, I feel like there has to be something tangible mm -hmm. um, to relate to that. And I think mm -hmm. that com in that communication mm -hmm. that you were talking about with the audience earlier, that just being clever starts to not not work out and mm -hmm. not and really fall short. Of having that loop connect with with folks, you know, mm -hmm. because they 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 understand that oh this mm -hmm. they they're smart too. Your audience is savvy, That's and right. if they're feeling like they're just being out trying to be somebody be clever That's with right. them, they'll shut down. And besides, if it's unfortunate, but it's also very true that we as artists live in a society that's already made up for us. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that the, the, the society in itself lives by a certain standard, lives by a certain rule. Yeah. We are the kind of people that have to adapt to this rule to survive. You understand what I'm saying? I hate that. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, so then, we so just, then how do we have to adapt or just pass? Like, but we can't pass. Then we won't live. We won't. We won't yeah. eat. We won't survive. Ooh. We won't. I mean, we can make all this art, but then all this art becomes just stuff. They don't. I mean, art is just stuff. In the, at the end of the day, yeah. They yeah. don't breathe. They don't live. That I mean, it's just pretty colors and whatever, right? It's stuff. Yeah. It's stuff. We're the ones who need to eat. We're the ones who need to be healthy. We're the ones who need to. You know what I'm saying? So then, how do you how do you make that happen? So I was even talking to an artist in 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 Harlem. Mm -hmm. At a show, you know, we were considering like, okay, if we are artists, and you know we are artists, because there's a whole stereotype about being an artist too. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we are the yes. kind of people that they say, well, you guys don't work like regular people. Yes. There's no nine to five jobs to do. You just do work when it feels good, when you're in the mood. Yeah. Or it's how everything is like expressing yourself. Expressing yourself, right? Yeah. And, and right. So then, so then, I thought like maybe what we should do is be an entrepreneurs. We are business people. We're making, we're making art, you know, but then we need to know how to make it happen to keep going, to yeah, make yeah. ourselves survive. Yeah, but entrepreneurship is a kind of skill set, too. It is a skill. It, 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 it's a skill set that at the same time that you would put in the same amount of hours Absolutely. that you put into your art practice to be able to get to communicate at a level where you feel like, you know, what you were saying, it gets to a ripeness that you could present right. it entrepreneurship also takes a developed skill set it's it's something That's that right. it's something that isn't abstract entrepreneurship isn't <laughs> abstract you're not it's reinventing not. it exactly things, you're not things are made right. uh, for, through certain product means of production and took into market mm -hmm. so the thing is just figuring out what things you're going to make to take to which market and how what those markets need and what kind of needs you're going to fill in that market now let's put it this way Mario. You're already putting your stuff in the market, just having it in the gallery. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. a market already. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then the thing is, though, when you're there, right, mm -hmm. 
Then you become okay. You become the star that said, okay, I'm I'm in this gallery. I'm doing my thing. But then, but then you start thinking, am I dependent at this gallery to survive? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because then it's almost like they 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 suck in your life. Like I have to make art. We use galleries to be alive, but then we also have to make money for me to be alive. Yeah. It's like this little circle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little circle, the oh, big circle. Big circle. Let me get it straight. <laughs> but yeah, but that's the functionality, right? Yeah. That's the functionality. Like, that you feel, do you want to be dependent? Yeah. On the system, even though we are these creative people, yeah, we're but, free. But, but, but usually, I think too, like <laughs> one of the things that I think is like a kind of perspective shift on, like the idea of right. just like, and that's just like in kind of just dealing with it. It's not so much, and and you're kind of talk, like touching on it a little bit because it's not so much just a dependency. If if if, if it was if it, in an ideal setting, it would be an interdependency where like you're dependent on them just as much as they are dependent, dependent on, on you. you. That's true. Yeah, so there's an exchange. That's true. That's true. So if there's an exchange in the relationship and a reciprocity in the relationship, just as much as you're talking about a reciprocity in like the artist viewer relationship, mm -hmm. then then it would seem to be it would seem to be something that was a great a good relationship or could be a potential great work. relationship because that's like with any within any relationship if there's a deficit on either side then it doesn't work right well depends who's winning you can say that to, <laughs> well you can say that to basquiat yeah yeah basquiat got his end and the end you know what i'm saying if you remember yeah. the history with basquiat yeah, but, 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 with, but also with something like that too that Artists like Basquiat and Vincent van Gogh right. and all these are the artists that set up that paradigm that you were talking about with, absolutely right. with the romantic idea of the artist, right? And they 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 the fine art. They right? either fell into that too, you know, they could even have fell into the myth of genius mm -hmm. or or maybe mm -hmm. they just in actuality had different things that led them to whatever they did or, or their thought process. So if we can look at them as models of like Okay, if they're models of, of what we could become, uh, or p the potentiality to become, or what not to be. So that you see them as cautionary, you could see them more as like cautionary tales right. than ones that you follow through because they had successes or failures or right. whatever, right? Yeah. And uh, I think the best, um, not the best, but one of the things that just comes to mind off the top of my head was um, after, you know, Andy Warhol and the factory had all of these different crazy that's people crazy. around right like, yeah that's and true. all these yeah. creatives mm -hmm. and you know never i never seen well just from reading and stuff it never seemed like there was a dull moment around the place right but something then, was always percolating but then this lady comes in and shoots him oh right <laughs> right this lady comes in and shoots him there you go and then there you he go. changed his whole game he had to yeah he had to yeah because there was no mm -hmm. no safety bubble around him mm -hmm. everything was open mm -hmm. so then in the next phase he started to bring more business savvy people around him mm -hmm. and you know instead mm -hmm. of selling his paintings to make movies they started making all these sales screen and making money right and that's then, right to make and that funded his movies and all that But I remember reading this one line where he was saying, like, with all the new generation of people that were around him that were more business oriented, he, I, I, I'm just paraphrasing, but he said, like, he looked around one day and he was like, this is really boring. Like, everybody's here just, it's business. Yeah, we're making money, but it's not like the good old days in the factory with all the craziness. And then one of the person said, told him, well, do you want to get shot again? And he said, no, <laughs> you there, know? You go. <laughs> there you go, right? There you go. And you're not, you know, selling out your paint, selling off your paintings for nothing. So that you can make your movies they were actually generating more of a business model right. so it kind of had made a shift and even though he had set up that initial time of being like a kind of crazy open time where right. they set up a lot of things for himself was it probably necessarily at that time financially successful yeah. of, of a model I'm but then when it did shift mm -hmm. to like becoming more of like a business model You know, there was the, there was this sacrifice of like all the craziness that had to not be there. No you have more. to kind of like you know, to, dilute it, because, it a little bit because it becomes to, yeah. then because it shifted into work. Not that the first half was wasn't work, but it, then it shifted into like this is how we work. This is a model of working. Yeah. And um, we are it. We work. We work. Yeah, like you're saying, we went back to labor. Yeah. So the party was over. Yeah. And they had to go to work the next. And morning. the man actually fed into the stereotype. 
You know what I'm saying? We're crazy. We artists, we're crazy. You know, yeah. we think about all this stuff, and, and we got go. We cut our ears off. But that was know? kind of. But that was, I think, he was doing it in a kind of conscious manner. <laughs> Absolutely no. Where, like he was actually doing it in a conscious manner that was about using it as like a kind of marketing tool. Exactly. That, Not just that's, because he was crazy. Always like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's so true because he's actually <laughs> utilizing that idea. You know, I mean, I mean, look at look at look at the entertainment business today. Same thing, you know, the fitting on and this idea of being, you know, alive and free and rebellious and whatever. Mm. And we're all had that kind of started out a little move, you know, movement for himself. Yeah. But yeah. he was an entrepreneur. He was an entrepreneur. He knew mm. exactly. So okay, let's 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 just say I just want to get kind of clear for from like now. For now. <laughs> for now. Yeah. What for what, what would be your what would be your definition? <laughs> Or model of entrepreneurial artist, like because you you sound like you've been thinking about this. So actually, you've been thinking about that too. Yeah, like that's, well, 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 that's how come our conversation is yeah, becoming those so, YouTube videos. Yeah, <laughs> so so it's all right. Yeah, so so what do you think? And what what, 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 do you, what what would be your perception of that? <laughs> you know what? I, you know what my 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 dream would be uh-huh. when we were in school, uh-huh. right? Art school. Mm-hmm. We were learning about all this stuff, the history, the mental, you know, the whole process of thinking about it and whatever. But I also wished that we had an opportunity to learn how to be savvy, how to be, how to survive with this thing, how to learn to survive it on our own. You know, I mean, everybody kind of have that a little bit. Engineers do it. Business students do it. Medical students do it. You know, like, what is our goal to actually say we make art and we can live by it because I'm an artist. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a whatever. Mm. I am an artist and yeah. I want to know how can I survive with the stuff that I make. Yes, yes. You understand what I'm saying? It's yeah, just like yeah. that moment where... Yeah. But I think too like... I don't just want to be thrown out in the street like make art and <laughs> good luck. <laughs> You know, and and enjoy the business. It's, like it's, it's like gonna the, hurt. The party's o- the party's over. You, yeah, you uh, you don't gotta go home, but you gotta get the fuck out of here. Yeah, close the doors. You know, like yeah. hey, suffer like all but, of us. But at the same that though, I think that's where there's a real kind of crack in the in <laughs> in the kind of art education, right? And a gap that is is exists um, because we were because I think. There were all these kind of socialist idealists that were our teachers Absolutely. that had nine to fives and didn't yeah. have to struggle with the hustle part of being an artist. <laughs> so they didn't know how to do that. They, they didn't know how to they do it. They themselves didn't know how to they do it. They themselves didn't know how You're to do it. You're absolutely correct. And they then also, know. they're kind of stuck in time. Yeah, yeah. There's a time lapse in there. You know, they're yeah. like in these vortex of time where the things that happened back then are no longer happening today. No, no. Like, for example, the whole idea of the art fair system, like you brought right. up Art Basel. Yeah. Like, that is a real opportunity if you were to understand that, mm-hmm. how you could work that into financial, mm-hmm. um, some kind of financial, st- not stability, but you could turn that into financial opportunities mm-hmm. for the best part. If you understood how that system worked and how, if not all of your work, but some of your work was geared towards a production for that market. Because, like, I've been looking That's at right. a like, I think the best model, and, and I'm sure people will not will totally hate this and think it's totally not correct. I understand that, but I'm just look, like looking around at other creative fields. What would be the best model that could be also somehow related to art? Mm-hmm. And um, the best model that I could kind of piece together, and it's also more like a co- popular culture model, so that more people in society understand it better than they even understand about how any system in art works. Uh, and that's like a, the fashion industry at least because yeah, within the that. fashion industry you have what, when they do their big uh, shows, shows, it's like yeah. a couture lines, right. which are, aren't made to sell to the general public. Right, they're not they're, meant to wear. Yeah. No, they're just big splashy things, incredible right, things, right. imaginative things, right, the, right, the shows right. and the wa- runway and all that are about being imaginative, about being creative, about putting their best foot forward in relationship to creativity. Mm-hmm. And then they have what they are, their flagship stores, or they go to the major boutiques and they sell. They become. They, they sell, become they have, a, they're ready, more ready to wear things, right. and that's a toned down <laughs> thing 
from the crazy couture yeah. line. It becomes a functional object. And then they have things that's even past that, like fragrances and right. things that they design for Target. You know, and art is only designed, or the model that they present us in art, well, at least within art schools, is to shoot for what would be equated to the couture. To shoot, that's it. To yeah. shoot for the museum yeah. exhibition. Right. To shoot for a high gallery exhibition. And galleries, what I found, even between museums and galleries, there's a whole different delay. Because I think museums are more of like a couture experience. Right, that's the and, end. And galleries should be something that is a ready to wear. Open. And this mm -hmm. art fair system that has been in play that wasn't necessarily in play as much as when our, the, the people that were our teachers mm -hmm. and people that are currently teaching in, in, in art institutions mm -hmm. even know how to deal with on any level. Mm -hmm. Because before there was brick and mortar galleries yeah. that in New York City, uh, mm -hmm. London, mm -hmm. you know. LA, I don't even think we could even talk about maybe a blip of yeah, a, a, a kind of a, a sad signal coming from the West Coast. <laughs> really, and that's so nice. a sad uh, in relationship to you know galleries that were in New York City. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then what happens is this whole paradigm of like, oh, you have to go to New York to see art, totally collapses when you in the United States at least you can go to Miami and see international art, oh right? My Everywhere, God, yeah. everything, that's everything. Right. That's right. And um, so the brick and mortar gallery <laughs> has to shift in relationship to how they distribute things because before they would have clients in their home base city mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera, right? But now they're go and they're going and putting their things in an international market almost right. instantaneously. Right. And that, that kind of changes the parameters of things. One is it has to be, like, unless it's a huge project that is a special project, things are usually have to come into like their shipping, param shipping parameters that are in play, costs of their booths that are in play, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> how they have to get their staffing there. You know, they have to pay all these things. So there's like a real kind of overhead that they take right. on by going to these fairs that like work has to kind of fit into the rubric of that they would be a possibility I mean, of selling it so that system. they could keep, yeah. It's a whole system. But that's a system that it hasn't, wasn't in play 20 years ago, no. so to speak. Well, you know? because art wouldn't survive that long. No, and then right. it's not, it wouldn't. No, no. No way, no way. No, because there's no way that somebody, and that's why the older galleries here in Los Angeles have been closing because they right. can't stay on they those airplanes flying around. That and just also because the market's not there. The market's not here. We have no. a very soft market here. In exactly. Los we have like a very high end market with the Eli Broads of the world that will, you know, are building, you know, saving museums right. and building their own museums. Right. And that's all awesome and great, but that's like a super level. That's not, that's just one level. There needs to be like multiple strata and of, then, art, of art uh, patronage. And you're city. absolutely correct, actually, to a point where art in itself is shifting too, because you are mentioning the couture. And, and, and that is so interesting because the, if, if you look back into the couture where you have unfunctional, you know, non functional fashion to becoming functional is almost like us making art. That becomes something for uh, to get the public involved. You know this interactive art now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. is, is also shifting to that kind of world mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. you know works of art that just lives in a wall now is becoming things in iPads and now you know for us to to play with. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it, it's also that understanding that that we as artists need to evolve. Yeah. Yeah, because there then, are new means of distribution for absolutely. us. Absolutely. That's the only way we're going to survive. And then also, it is a business. <laughs> it is a business. Not 100%. Art making is a business. And then going back to our basil, you know, I mean, if you look, if you've been to that, to that fair, it's a fair, right? Or, yeah, yeah. yeah, right? The way that they do it, they shift it around. You know, you have your you have your contemporary artists, yeah, but they also sell those artists that are already gone. Yeah, so yeah. they kind of mix it all together, yeah. almost to a point to get. You know, it's almost like going to Disneyland, where you, you look, you know, you look right and you see all the good stuff, but the bad stuff is on your left. You know, and then like look right. You know, I'm like, don't forget about this. Look left. It's almost like the same thing. They kind of mix it all together, where the buyer. You know, the collector don't know left from right. Mm. They just is in our basil. Yeah. Must be good. Yeah. Okay. That, but that but that becomes the role of like the spokesperson of the gallery role. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because then they, they they function. It's interesting because they function directly in a kind of they function directly in an educational 
capacity. They know their stuff. They have to educate the people <laughs> yes. on, on the work that they're selling. So they have right. to be very savvy about Absolutely. how to contextualize it, how to speak about they're it. They're sales the people. Language. They're salesmen. They're salesmen? They're salesmen? And at the same time, they are very passionate about art too. Absolutely. Because they're taking a risk. Yes. They're taking risks. They're, they're taking risks, you know, financially, but they're also taking risks just as much, almost as much as the artists. They're partners. They're real partners in it at that point. Right. You know, they're real partners in taking the risk. They're making so, it. So, so that's where, that's like, so now, now that's where I'm understanding and being able to deal with galleries now in that capacity to understand like the risk that they're taking and respect that. Right. And I think that, um, and, 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 and also they, you have to see them like in a business where we're talking about business, they're in partnership with you as a business, as an artist, galleries relationship, it's a business partnership. Yeah, it is a business. It's a total 100%. business partnership. So there has to be a, a, there has to be that mutual respect, trust and trust yeah. and all those things that in a partnership you need. Yeah. And, um, and nobody, and, and that's one of the things that I think in school that I was you, you never get to touch on either no. is that you think you're in it in, a, in an isolated way. And you're not. You're, you're not. Yeah. You need the support structures around you. You know exactly. how to, You need to learn how to interface with those support structures and be in partnership with those support structures right. to make things happen. And that goes back to my point about dependency. Because then, you know what I'm saying, it's almost like you, you are, if you have that support structure, right, each one of them work for you and you work for them because they need your art. For them to survive. Yeah, yeah, for right? sure, sure, sure. And I you think, need them for for you to survive too. Yeah, yeah. Because you artists bring a lot to the table. If, right. if you think of it in relationship to like a kind of another another analogy, just <laughs> just uh, like if you think about it, it sport, it if you think about sports, for example, you know you can't just have players. Right. You need, the coaches, you need coaches, trainers, and trainers managers, and yes. owners, you need the guy selling the popcorn, you know what I'm saying? There's like all this strata of infrastructure that's built around that. And that's one of the that's things, right. and that's, that's what right. I think I'm, in art schools, that's what they're failing to, to communicate with the students, that you are not in an isolated individual, they want, they train you to be an individual, but they don't right. teach you how to interface with all these infrastructures see, and support you're saying structures. failing. Are you sure they're failing or just they don't want to say it? Well, I feel, I feel like maybe they don't want to say it. Maybe because that's, that's, the, that's the magic. That's, that's the, right. That's the wizard behind the curtain. That's right. You see if you can but break it or break it. Yeah, or, if you, or they want to keep you out. The competition. Yeah. The competition, Mario. <laughs> there you go. But I like competition. I do, me too. And competition that's makes it go. Like if I'm yes. playing the game and there's nobody I'm playing against, what's the point? I can That's just, why we I'm can't kick, teach. Kicking the ball around by myself. You need the competition. You need competition so you can keep going. But then, but then this. Okay, but it's true. It's true. The artist's life is hard as hell. It's the hardest. <laughs> it's the In hardest. Any, it is. It is the hardest of any. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, because you gotta be smart. Yeah. You gotta be like talented. You gotta be talking. You, yeah. There's no boss. You gotta smile. <laughs> You got you got to play the game. Yeah. You have to play the game pretty well. And then you got to take those battles, you know, good or bad and keep on trucking. <laughs> because if you don't, you're going to fail and you're going to be a failure. You're going to feel bad, you know what I'm saying? Like my work sucks. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah. You suck. The work is great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh my god, that's because the best one. You suck. Your work is great. Yeah, your work is great, but you But it's true though cuz I know a lot of artists that right? are they're geniuses. They're geniuses. But their attitude is terrible. It's terrible. So whenever you see them, you're like, dude, I don't even want to talk to you because you're such a freaking Smart terrible ass. attitude. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or you're just complaining and yeah. I don't I got my own fucking problems. Exactly. I don't worry about that. It's not about you. The thing is, this is not just about you. When you're involving everybody else, when you are now exist in the world, everybody's involved. Mm. Everybody's involved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just yeah. not about you. Regardless of what you are and what, what your character is, regardless of how your personality is, you have to integrate everybody, the audience, the agents, the galleries, the whatever, the viewer next door, because you're talking to them. You know, that, that energy. You're really pushing that energy outside. You know what I'm saying? So 
that's that, that's how your art lives. Yeah, yeah. But then you have to be smart enough to also make sure that you can survive in this square of a world we live in where everything is kind of systematic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have a job, you make your money, go home and eat, pay your bills. Mm -hmm. You got to pay your bills, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that's why we have professors, they're getting old. Yeah. They can't move forward because they got to pay their bills. Yeah, yeah. You know so, what I'm saying? So, so, how, so how can you streamline it to not have so many freaking bills? Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you consciously make an effort if you understand that the structures of the, the parameters of, of culture right. or society are about like getting this kind of grinder on you to have like so much debt, so right. much bills that you have to pay right. that then like all of your energy is focused on like making money to pay bills and not being open to have the creative part. And I think that that's why art, artists have always been kind of migratory. They, yeah. they, they've had to migrate to places where rent is cheap so that they can have the space to do the, you know, the, the, the you know mind that, space. That's very interesting that mm -hmm. you even mentioned that because it's almost like, the, okay, when we were in school, we were fed. I mean, you, you, me, you know, all of us included. We were fed this vision of, of what art is, mm -hmm. what art should look like. Oh. Look at these artists. Ooh, so chic. I want that. I want to be. <laughs> rich right i want to be that andy warhol i want to be coons i want to be look at look at the exoticism of being an artist yeah yeah hell no <laughs> until you get out and you'll be like well how come i'm not rich yet <laughs> now i have all this competition other artists coming through because they're younger than you oh, you know energy. the fresh right they're fresh the fresh <laughs> and you're already gone so then, so then how do you function that way? Because that will break you. That will break the spirit 100%. Yeah, just yeah. thinking in that way. Yeah. So then you have to like figure a way to be yourself. Be strong on yourself, saying I know me, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But then again, be flex flexible enough to understand how the world works. And how it's changing. And how it's changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See yeah, like Madonna. Saying? Oh my God, every she decade, right? She changes. I think it's even quicker than that now. Like, yeah. Yeah, how, how, or like, even like Dr. Dre, I think is a good example for hip hop. Yeah. It's like Dr. Dre made his moment with NWA, right? But then he was responsible for the introduction of all these other people exactly. too. Exactly. Well, Eminem, Snoop Dogg. That's and, right. And he, He's, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and he kept, kept this kind of like, uh, elder statesman status, but was always in, involved in the, presentation of the newer generation so he was never like leaving himself out no he knew he couldn't be the front man because he's not 20 years old anymore right but he had these people in the front and then i think also too like in terms of entrepreneurship i think he had mentorship in people that had been there done that before and i think it was the 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 owner of the label that he was in i forget which one but you know now he has the beats by dre headphones right yeah and um, the story that the guy, I was listening to some documentary and the owner of the record label, I forget which record label they were on, but anyway, the man was saying that Dr. Dre, at that point, all the rappers and stuff are making sneakers, special edition sneakers, right? And that he went in to talk to the man and he's like, hey, you know, everybody's making sneakers, 50 Cent, everybody, should I make a sneaker? And the guy said, sneakers? You're Dr. Dre, fuck sneakers, you should be making speakers. Right? Because that is this in tandem is exactly. with who he is. It was more in line with exactly. who he is. And now, man, these headphones, you got to pay 300 bucks for them. And yeah. I, went, when I, when I remember when I was in Best Buy and I saw the kid there and I asked, what? how come these are so expensive? And he said, because they're made by Dr. Dr. Dre. Dre. But I was like, yeah, but are the speakers better? Is their technology yeah. better? He was like, no, that's just Dr. Matter. Dre. Yeah, they sign. Dr. Dre, right? And that's what I, that's like in relationship that's to like exactly. creating like a business model to make it integrated like you're talking about they also have to be in line with who you are so like if you're you like got the, it mario so you like got it you know the first uh, the first uh nationally endorsed product <laughs> by black by black singers were the supremes and they almost had a failure bomb That's because true. you know what their first uh, endorsement deal was with? White bread. 
<laughs> so imagine the Supremes. Yeah. The were on the Ed Sullivan show more times than any other artist, all completely white or black. They were like really breaking ground on 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 presenting African Americans in the United States on television. Mm -hmm. And their first endorsement deal was for a special blend white bread. So like that's what I'm saying. It was like almost a it was a controversy yes, because like right. what is this? especially in that time when the civil right. rights movement was going on and all these kind of things and uh so like where do you find this entrepreneurship or where where can you find these things that are in line with you and what your value systems are or what you've been kind of creating this language for yeah. and, and and bringing these things all together so there really does have i liked when you said integrate because those things have to be integrated they can't be totally out That's of it. whack with no. who you are yeah they can't be because then they, 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 they totally will reek of inauthenticity and not that in not that authenticity has to be there because uh, there's a lot of the B, bs that goes out there but at, but at least at least i think it's great that there for me at least i feel like there would have to be some kind of authenticity or mm -hmm. relationship to like well, who i am because if i'm going to be making something and I, and I have no passion for it or have no understanding of it then then that's not going to work either. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the best example to that that lost his passion. I mean, I don't know if you know about the Boondocks, the cartoon. Oh yeah, I know the Boondocks. You right? Yeah, yeah. Aaron, what is his name? Something like Magruder. Yeah, something. but he had the hotel. The hotel. He had the hotel. He had everything, but he kind of lost, lost, lost the the um, his power because then the Boondocks became somebody else's. You know, oh. I mean, he had no more control over it. Oh. So it kind of like that's why it's, it's no more. It doesn't exist. Oh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So it became so much. He was young too, so it's kind of like figuring things out. Yeah, yeah. And somebody else took over. Oh. You know. Oh. So then, in a way, is again going back to the self. If you know yourself, if you know your art, if you know what you're doing, it comes out of these hands, hold on to it. Because your job is almost like you, you, you like your child, you know what I mean? Your job is to make sure that thing grows and becomes its own voice, fine. Mm -hmm. But when he needs your help, you got to be there. Yeah, yeah. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be there, right? Yeah. But then again, you, you got it, Mario. Exactly what I was talking about. You have to be that entrepreneur. Yeah. But also, I think also to you, you have to be there. But then there's also a point where you gotta like kick it out the house. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the you're point. You're getting too big. You're getting too that's big. You need point. to go find your own place. Yeah, no, that's, the, that's the point. You know, I mean, that's the point to. I guess that's the balance. You that's you have to balance. plant your seed, you know, and your seeds are gonna be everywhere. Yeah. But one day somebody's gonna gonna challenge your seed, you oh. know, regardless of where he's at, yeah, yeah. you have to come back, you know, and say, okay, that's my, my seed is doing okay where he's at. Then you go back to where you are. You have to, you have your headquarters, Yeah, yeah. but the thing is evolving, you know, becoming yeah. his own thing. But then how do you make the seed go over there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of stuff to work out. So, and, and it's true, I mean, I, I, think it was, I think it was Daniel Martinez who told me this when I was a student. I think it was him, he said, when you're making art, and he's so right, 10% is the art making, 90% is the process of getting it together. Mm -hmm. The whole network of it, the, I mean, being literally a businessman, network, how you make it survive, how are you going to survive? Mm -hmm. You know, because the object is done. Mm -hmm. That thing has no life. You are the one who's giving life. I mean, you can be just standing over here. It's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fine where it's at. doesn't matter where it's at. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. I'm okay over here in my little corner. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Okay. That's yeah. our job. So that's our job. Okay, then. And Gigi, that was an awesome conversation. Ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. Thank, thank you so much. You're um, welcome. Uh, we should do a project about entrepreneurship. Uh, that, awesome. that, that, so, so that's what we're going to title this uh, conversation. <laughs> Be there, entrepreneur. Or entre, uh, entrepreneur <laughs> in 2013. You'll figure it out when All I right. see it on <laughs> This is Mario Barr Jr. here with Ninjuji. We just had this awesome, awesome conversation. Uh, we're signing off it's now. Crazy. Thanks, everybody. Bye.